Drones and computer chips of American origin are increasingly finding their way into Russia from China through the trade routes of Central Asia, underscoring the complexity of supply restrictions for Moscow's military operations, according to the Wall Street Journal. Trade routes passing through the former Soviet republics of Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan are among the many pathways into Russia for so-called dual-use goods that the US and its allies screen out fearing they could be used on the battlefield. Despite their efforts, Central Asia remains a growing pipeline for Russia, made possible by thousands of kilometers of open borders, opaque trading practices, and opportunistic middlemen. Goods often come from China, where they are manufactured, sometimes by major American companies claiming that these goods are imported into Russia without their permission. The Central Asian trade route is especially important because it feeds a high concentration of Western-produced goods into Russia. It is a key route for microelectronics, car parts, luxury goods items both used on the battlefield in Ukraine and for personal consumption, says Natalie Simpson, a Russia analyst at C4ADS, a Washington-based non-profit research firm specializing in national security issues. The U.S and its allies maintain a list of dual-use goods subject to sanctions, including computer chips, routers, and ball bearings used in tanks. Last year, the list comprised 45 items, with five more added in February. Chinese exports of dual-use goods to Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan sharply increased since February 2022. Germany eyeing Indian and Arab nations' artillery stocks to arm Ukraine. Der Spiegel. Germany is considering approaching India and Arab nations to source additional artillery shells for Ukraine, Der Spiegel has claimed. The media outlet alleged that Western intelligence chiefs recently warned that Kiev's defences could collapse unless its ammunition shortages are addressed quickly. Der Spiegel reported that a top German military commander overseeing the procurement of weapons for Ukraine General Christian Freuding convenes bi-weekly closed-door meetings with national diplomats, chancellery staff and other officials. Topping their agenda is the question of whether countries may still have considerable stocks of artillery shells and whether they could be enticed to share some of them, the media outlet claims. There is even a promise of discretion if a nation prefers to remain neutral on the Ukraine issue, it added. Der Spiegel quoted Freuding as confirming to the German parliament last week that Berlin is trying to purchase ammunition from all over the world with special emphasis on 155mm NATO standard rounds. According to the article, Germany has been eyeing India as a potential partner, with some estimates indicating that New Delhi could have hundreds of thousands of shells. Given that India maintains close relations with Russia, any potential deal could only be conducted in secrecy and with the help of intermediaries, Der Spiegel claimed. As such, discreet negotiations are underway to determine if this ammunition could be offered through intermediaries. Similar arrangements could potentially be secured with unnamed Arab nations, the report suggested, adding that some Balkan and African states may also have stockpiles of the ammunition in question or be able to produce it. Meanwhile, the head of leading Western intelligence agencies warned during a meeting on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference earlier this month that Ukraine might lose the ability to hold the front line by June, the media outlets reported. To prevent such a scenario, the West needs to quickly supply Kiev with artillery rounds, the top spies are said to have concluded. Houthis launched missile strike on oil tanker heading from Russia in Red Sea. The Houthis attacked Panamanian flagged tanker in the Red Sea, which was carrying crude oil to India, according to Reuters. It is reported that a missile launched from Yemen hit the tanker Pollux on the port side. The vessel was attacked northwest of the port of Mokka off the coast of Yemen. The tanker Pollux departed from the Russian Black Sea port city of Novorossiysk on January the 24th and was scheduled to be unloaded in Paradip, India on February the 28th. The vessel is owned by Oceanfront Maritime Company. The Indian oil company has a 300,000 barrels per day oil refinery in Paradip in the eastern state of Odisha. After the strike, Houthi rebels in Yemen stated that they would continue to attack ships in the Red Sea in solidarity with Hamas militants. Earlier, it was reported that Yemeni Houthi rebels fired rockets at the Marlin Luanda tanker belonging to the Trafigura group. The strike occurred approximately 55 miles southeast of the city of Aden. 
A fire broke out on board the vessel. Later, it became known that the tanker was carrying Russian petroleum products for the production of gasoline and plastics. The cargo was loaded onto the ship in Greece, indicating a violation of EU and US sanctions on the export of Russian petroleum products by the carrier. This was the second time the Houthis targeted a tanker carrying Russian oil, with the first attack occurring on January the 12th. It is reported that the rocket launch was carried out southeast of the Yemeni port city of Aden. The vessel was selected as a target, presumably based on outdated publicly available information. Previously, the tanker was owned by a British company.